Well, hello, hello. So I have been asked to do a few questions from the CPM um, textbook. So I am looking at specifically going to quickly go over 1-4, 1-5, and 1-6. And this is from the CC2, the seventh grade textbook. So the 1-4 is asking us, decide what shapes below, decide what the shapes below have in common, write your answer in complete sentences. So if I look at these shapes, right, what are each of these shapes? If we look at what they may have in common, well, first of all, which is always good to do, is if, remember your vocab, this is a triangle. This is a, I would say, um, looks like a parallelogram. This one here is, uh, looks like a pentagon. And that one is a trapezoid. So they're all different shapes, but one of the things that they all do have in common, they're all part of the family that we know as um, polygons. So we can write that and we can say in a complete sentence um, that they all are all polygons. So I'm going to have you do that. I'm not going to write it down for space here. So, but that would be one thing. They're all polygons. Okay. They are all the shapes are polygons. The other thing to, to look at is maybe look at their angles. What do you notice about the angles? I've got an obtuse angle and an acute angle. I've got an acute angle here and obtuse. Remember obtuse and acute? Ob, let me go over here. Obtuse is uh, greater than 90 degrees and acute is less than 90 degrees. Okay, just a reminder of what obtuse and acute angles are. Obtuse greater than 90 degrees, acute is less than 90 degrees. So if I look, this has got an acute obtuse. This one's got acute obtuse. This one here, all of those are only obtuse and this as well is acute and obtuse, that one's obtuse. It also has a couple 90s here too, 90 degree angles. So at least we can also say maybe that um, all of them have obtuse angles. So that's another thing you could write down. So they're all polygons and they all have obtuse angles, okay? So then the next thing is, is draw two more shapes that belong in the, in the same set. Well, um, we've got a pentagon. What would be the next thing past a pentagon? Uh, let's do that one. That is this guy here, which is a hexagon, six sides. So six sides is a hexagon. Let's see what else are we missing. And, and it's got a hexagon does have obtuse angles. Uh, the other thing that we may be, be able to do, um, can I do a rectangle? If, if I draw a rectangle, a rectangle is a polygon. But does a rectangle have a, an obtuse angle greater than 90 degrees? It doesn't. So it just depends on what we said we the have in common. If we just said they're all polygons, then we could draw a rectangle. If, they, if we said that they all have obtuse angles, then we couldn't draw a rectangle. So I think that's good. Oh, you know, the other one would be what they call a kite. It looks like this. That's another polygon, and that would have obtuse angles. Kind of like a kite is what they call that. Okay, so those are my shapes I'll, I'll draw. Let's move on to 1-5. 1-5 wants me to figure out the missing sides. So according to this diagram, from here to here, the whole thing is 28. And then the, the shorter part here is 11. So what is the missing side? Well, to find that out, that would be 28 minus 11. Because if the whole thing's 28 and just part of it's 11, well, 28 minus 11 is 17. So that missing side is 17, and actually I should label it millimeters, 17 millimeters. Over here, this one, they actually give us the whole thing, but they're telling us in little chunks. So from there to there, that piece, what they wanted to know is the five plus 12, so that's 17 millimeters. And then the entire thing, so from here to here, all the way across, would be 17 plus 13, which would be 30 millimeters. Okay. And then the last one, it asks us to refer to the number line shown below and list two situations or problems for which you have used a number line in the past. Well, interesting with thing with number lines is when I think of a number line, I actually think of a thermometer. Come on. Oops. 
almost misspelled that. A thermometer. So a thermometer is a, a number line. It has that same characteristics. If we turn that number line that way, right, you could actually see it as a temperature gauge, positive and negative temperatures. But if, if I'm thinking about how I practically use a number line, I could say also another example, another situation would be um, adding or subtracting integers, right? So if I have a, for an example, if I said, uh, I want to know what uh, negative four plus eight is, right? If I wanted to know what negative four plus eight is, I would start at negative four and I would add eight. So I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I then jump all the way here, that would be negative four plus eight. And my final answer would be positive four. So that would be another way of using a number line. Okay, guys, there you go.